the Outdoor Chef, hosted here by Bowtech and all of their incredible brands. Uh, my name is Jonathan Collins. I'm a professional chef. This is my oldest son, Dakota, and my youngest son, Bailey. Hello. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> and we're, uh, we're so glad that you've taken this time to join us. We're really excited oh, yeah. about oh, yeah. uh, sharing these recipes and talking about, in this case, Wild turkey. Yep, wild turkey with dumplings. What could be better, right? <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, chicken and dumplings is a classic recipe. Yep. And so I was thinking about, uh, so last week, if you haven't seen last week's broadcast, go back and see it. Yeah. We did a wild turkey cast iron cottage pie. So oh, it's basically man. a shepherd's <laughs> pie. It was delicious. There was leftovers for about two days. We just kept chipping away at that cottage pie, yeah. pie block. But we wanted to make sure, if you go back and see last week's episode, you'll see a big turkey, the whole turkey. Yep. As a matter of fact, where's that bird, the bird we got last night? Go get okay, go get it. So, we got another we bird. We got another bird last night. I, <laughs> honestly, for me, the idea of, as a professional chef, harvesting your own food, taking the responsibility of plucking it and field dressing yep. it, it's like, I, on, first of all, I don't waste a single piece no, of meat. Start not to the, finish. Nothing, yep. right? And that's exactly what we did. Now you saw last week we took the breasts off and used that meat and then that dark meat for the cottage pie. But now we took those legs off that bird from last week and we smoked them. Yeah. So what does smoking do? So we froze that bird. Yep. So froze the thing for food safety, remind me about food safety yep. in a second. Okay. okay. So this is the bird. Look at this. And so this is we're saving this guy for another recipe. He was a younger guy. But I'm telling you, man, there's nothing like this. This beats going to the market or the grocery store every day of the week. And the taste, there's nothing like it. So I want to show you this, our uh, <laughs> Eastern wild turkey. I'm loving it. I'm just going to set them right over here. Yeah. And, yeah, we got them. Uh, and now, we're going to touch on food safety. Food safety. So you've thawed your, your whole turkey, right? Let's say you've used a couple of the breasts. What yeah. are you going to do with the rest? And that's what made us think, well, let's smoke it. Because you can't, once you thaw a bird, we, we shot the bird, we plucked it, and froze it immediately, the whole bird. So then we thawed it. You cannot refreeze it until you cook it again. Exactly. So the beautiful thing about smoking it, and once we get these uh, dumplings on, I'm going to take you to the barbecue, talk a little bit about how we smoked it. Uh, once you smoke it, all of a sudden, it's food safe again. Yep. And you can do two things with it. You can either cook with it like we did, or you can put it back in the freezer for another time. Yep. And so smoking does a few things. Obviously, tons of flavor. You oh, love yeah. smoking. I love smoking, especially in the summer. You have your usual barbecues, but then as soon as you start to smoke, oh, yeah. you got hickory, applewood. You, there's Mesquite, so many the different things you can do. Comes to life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you're looking, you know, um, as professional chefs, we're always looking for little cheats, little ways to get good food better, to yeah. make great food even better. The way you do that is by finding little ways. Yeah. And smoking is a way to add flavor, yeah. to add tenderness. Yeah. And if you've already hunted wild turkey, you know those birds, they get tough from running around, from yeah. us chasing them, yeah. and from out running those. We got so many coyotes on, uh, oh. on film. It was unreal. They were in their, uh, what do you call it, red phase? Well, yeah, it's like they're like this reddish brown color, just gorgeous. You almost, they almost look like a fox, just the different tail. Yeah. Yeah. Big, bushy, but killing lots of birds. We, yeah. we found three kill sites, got, but they just yeah. literally, they left it nothing looked like behind. a bomb had gone off. <laughs> yeah, just like Feathers boom, everywhere. Gone. Yeah. So, uh, we love wild turkey. Um, it's a big deal for us because, you know, uh, being able to uh, be part of the story of reintroducing them yeah. here in southwestern Ontario yeah. and bringing back the numbers and getting the message out of how much fun it is, but we're here to cook. So let's do a little bit of cooking. Let's do it. Um, so, I'll tell you what, let's go off camera and yeah. I'll bring the camera over and we'll talk a little bit about what we did. So, uh, what we did is earlier today is we simply took these absolutely gorgeous legs that were, oh, we got, yeah, there you go. Uh, absolutely gorgeous legs that we smoked okay so first of all what you're going to notice from this is all of that beautiful and intense color so you can see that uh, that so if you look at the the color of this stock this was just water no stock added and you know one of the things I'm looking for here do you see those little golden beads there that's a that beautiful turkey fat so that's rendered and I'm gonna leave that in there now I'm gonna pull this out 
And so after we've taken all the goodness from this, now what Dakota's going to do is he's going to shred that down, and that's going to go back into this beautiful pot. Now you can see we've got some uh, bay leaves in here. The bay leaves we're going to fish out. Man, it smells, doesn't it smell good? Yeah, you know the other thing I, I never really thought about, but I also uh, love about smoking the barbecue is, I know personally me, I, after the breast and, you know, being able to cut it into little cubes, I don't know if I'd really know what to do about pulling all the meat and everything off that bone. So it's nice to just kind of be able to break that joint, take it off, cook it whole, and then just to be able to take a fork and just pull it off. And, yeah, yeah. and it, not have to worry about it. Just well, pull it off and you got beautiful meat there still. So. That and the other big thing about this is because it is an otherwise kind of tough cut, this is something that we can do with this. And when Dakota uh, starts cutting this up, he's going to show you. Uh, this is something that we can make tender by essentially what we're doing. So we smoked it. Then we put it in some water. That gives us a beautiful stock. From there, leaving it in is essentially, we're essentially poaching it. It's a little bit of poach and bra uh, braise. So what that means is that meat is going to be tender. We'll be able to pull that off and shred it up. Now, we got a beautiful stock going. I want to do a few more flavor uh, additives. Bailey's got one of my favorite ingredients, and I know it's one of your favorite too. <laughs> so we're just going to take regular slab bacon. It's uh, double smoked. Uh, it's a different smoke. So this is applewood. That was hickory. hickory yeah. We're going to mix up the smoking, and you might say, man, it's a lot of smoke. Remember, with those dumplings, you got that beautiful, heavy dough. Yeah. And it's going to be bright. It's going to be flavorful. But you need something to go with that fat. I see we've got a question. Uh, Megan. Okay, so Jeremiah says, which is better, electric smoker or non-electric smoker? Well... Jeremiah from last week. Jer Jeremiah from last week. Thank you for watching, Jeremiah. Listen, Jeremiah, the, the easy answer is whatever smoker yeah, you can get your hands on. Whatever you have available on. to you. Pellet, electric, charcoal, whatever you have available. Whatever, you know. There are a lot of really great brands and partners that we work with. and we, You'll learn more about them as we move ahead. But I'm telling you right now, you know, some of the best smoking. I can tell you. I'll tell you. I, best smoking job probably I ever did. I was doing it for the President of the United States. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, just, yeah, oh, yeah okay. Uh, but I'm not kidding you, okay? It was, it was uh, Plains Bison. It was a, a beautiful big cut. Uh, it was uh, sirloin. Uh, and uh, so I, I smoked it. But you know what I used? This is my point. I literally took some chips, soaked them, wrapped them in some foil, because we didn't have a smoker, yeah. poked it in, poked some holes in it, yeah. and put it on offset heat. So I'll show you that when we go back outside when yeah. our dumplings are cooking. Offset heat is critical. If you can't offset heat, so that means I've got a source of heat here, but my 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 I got enough room to put my bird or whatever you're smoking off to the side. Because yeah. otherwise what will happen is it is overcooked. With no direct heat. Yeah, exactly. No direct heat. You want like 200, 225, nice light smoke and yeah. not too much. Just to develop a beautiful smoke ring. And one of the secrets we did with this is that if you can find yourself some old whiskey barrel chunks, wine barrel, barrel chunks. Barrel. You take those chunks and you just put them in the same way you do all your other smoking material yep. and you get all that flavor from your favorite whiskey, wine, or anything is gonna come right out. So if you're flying down a country road and you <laughs> see somebody with some planter baskets and it, they look like old wine cast, stop, pick them up, cut them up, you know. Pay for them. Pay for them, yes. Only well, you pay them. for them, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's incredible ways to get flavor. And so to your point, whether it's electric, whether it's uh, propane, natural gas, or just out over an open fire, and we're going to show you some of those, smoking is a great way to infuse incredible flavor and get beautiful moisture. So as I start to take apart this bird, I just want to show you a couple of things. You'll see on this part of the leg, this sinewy, tendonish part. You want to make sure that you slice any of that off. Obviously, that's not going to cook down. That is hard as a rock. And the incredible thing is that is not present in the domestic birds. No, this not is in the raised birds. Like sinew. Yeah. I could make string out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, this thing right here. So there's, uh, I think there were seven of them. So they go right down that so front see, leg. They down this part of the leg. And all I'm going to do is I slide my knife in behind it, slide it up, and then slide down it. And it comes out really easily. Perfect. So you can see, and then literally, you can just watch this one right here. You can just literally pull that out. Yeah, beautiful. And then look, you see them all here. Okay. So they just pull. It's just common sense. You see it. Yep. There we go. Yep. Looks almost like a tendon. 
It, it is. That's it is. exactly precisely what it is. So on that front, on that foreleg of the wild turkey, it's it's the meat is thin. These uh, birds are running around. You know, if you've been out there, you know they don't like to fly. They get their big butts up in the air every now and then. But these are runners. Every time I've seen them, until we start having some success, they are running away from me all the time. But uh, you know. It's uh, something that you have to keep that in mind. So that's what we are thinking. Whenever you're thinking about how do I cook something, think about what is that muscle used for? Yeah. Does it have marbling? Is there going to be connective tissue? And that will help you to understand. Like, for example, if you take a pork shoulder, think about a wild hog. You know that with all that fat and connective tissue, you want to cook it low, you want to cook it slow, yeah. you're going to braise. This was a perfect example of something that's brilliant to smoke. I'll just show you this real quick. You can see that smoke ring that's developed along the edge of that meat. Yeah, that's beautiful. And as, as I'm literally taking it apart, you can smell that hickory. It's, it's just beautiful. incredible. Oh, that's amazing. So now timing in terms of smoking. You don't want to smoke for too long. Anything more than in this case, with the thickness of this bird, babe, you can start to saute that. Uh, we got to have that bacon. So we're going to add bacon in this. I think it'll be a nice balance of flavor. Uh, we're always trying to do recipes that gets people. We, you know, as, as hunters and outdoors people, you know, we, all, we have kind of affinity for wild food. But uh, we want to get, you know, some of the people who are skeptics. We want to get them eating. So we want to put some familiar flavors and balance of flavors. Um, one of the things I can tell you about balancing flavors is you want to think about your palate. Every time you go to make something, if something is, you know, if something's all sweet or all bitter or all sour or all fatty, yep. it's not very pleasant. As a matter of fact, for this dish, which is going to be a little heavier, I brought out some pickles that we made this week. So we made these beautiful pickles out of uh, English cucumber. Um, actually, I can post that recipe too. But what I'm thinking is, once we get this going, I'm going to put some of those pickles on the side so that I, as I have that dumpling and that beautiful gravy, that I've got something to kind of cut the fat there too. So Bailey's starting that bacon in a, in a hot pan. Yep. Keep your eye on that. And with a dish like this, you can see I've got like a really kind of, this part has been dried out quite a bit. And I can tell you we're headed up to bear camp in about a week and that's gonna be- Jerky. That's gonna be jerky. You yep. know, just use common sense. If you have a tough piece, most likely if it's that tough, you're not gonna soften it up. So you don't want someone getting a hard bite of that yep. in their dumpling. Absolutely. So dumplings uh, by their very nature are very, uh, you know, they're soft. And uh, there's a beautiful bone, right? Yep. Uh, so, and so you want to make sure that all the flavors are also in line with that. So a little bit of texture here, texture here with the meat. But like Dakota said, he's going to make sure that those pieces are uniform, that they're bite sized and very, very pleasant. Yeah. It's also uh, really important. Uh, one of the things he ever taught me was uh, when you're cooking, to always make sure everything is very uniformly sized. Otherwise, you'll be sautéing something, and while some of the stuff is burning, some of your other pieces might just start be starting to cook. And then you'll end up with, like, some will be soft, some will be hard, and then some will be burnt, some, and then this doesn't really taste good. So while we're doing a little bit of this uh, prep, I want to just take a minute and throw out a huge nod to our uh, to a, a, a good... A great man and, and ultimately a, a, a great friend, uh, Jim Burnworth, uh, man, that, uh, that bear, I don't know what was better, that bear in your tree stand and the conversation, <laughs> if you haven't seen the video yet, you have to see it. Go down into the Bowtech feed and see Jim Burnworth, I mean, conversation, it's like the bear's on the pulpit and he's down there begging him, let's switch places. <laughs> anyway, congrats on that one and the live one, it's inspiring. Yep. Thank you, sir, thank you. And also... Uh, uh, tra trained to hunt. Uh, we were watching. We were watching the Arizona trained to hunt. Yeah. They're like, come on. So again, if you if you haven't been watching that that athletic competition, I mean, if I'm going to do it next year, I might need to spend a bit more time in the gym. <laughs> but uh, it's an inspiration for me. I can tell you, I was uh, back on the uh, the barbells uh, the next day after I saw that. So congrats, guys. Uh, Team Botech, you're killing it. I'll give you a look at this. You'll see as I'm just cutting that into uniform pieces. That way when someone takes a bite out of this gorgeous dumpling, they're not going to get a, a bite that they can't handle. Look at all that smoke ring there, right? Great. Okay. So while you're working on that, I'm going to start dumplings. All right. So dumplings have, there's uh, 27 ingredients. 
and they have to be put in for sight? No. It's easy. All-purpose flour, some baking powder, some baking soda, yeah. buttermilk, always buttermilk, just like when you're making biscuits. Um, I thought you were pointing off the handle there for a second. I'm like, there's like five ingredients. <laughs> Surefire Wednesdays. Surefire Wednesdays. And the outdoor chef is all about simplicity. Yeah. It's about taking, you know what? Recipes with 20 ingredients, just take those books and use them to start your fire next week. Or your smoker. Or your smoker. <laughs> all that is, is people hiding behind pretentious ideas about food. The best thing, the best foods are the ones that you know, that your mother, your grandmother, your great-grandmother, and all family members have made for generations. They're the simplest ingredients, and they're always, they always taste the best. So I'm going to get started with this. And grab this one. So this is just regular all-purpose flour. Okay, I need uh, five cups of that. So when you're measuring for something like this, Bay's got a knife there. Uh, this is simple. If those of you know it at home, you want to make sure that your measures are fairly equal. When you're talking about baking in particular, it's a bit more scientific than the run and gun stuff that we do with everything else. Now I just want to touch on the fact that we are doing some giveaways tonight. Botec has been great enough to give us. We're going to do two $50 gift cards for their merchandise site. And the merch Botec merchandise. Oh, it's awesome. It's sick. So we're going to, let's say uh, 7.30, yep. we're going to give away the first of the Botec uh, $50 get, uh, cards. And what we'll want you to do at uh, 7.30 is to like, to share, to comment, and if you don't mind, tag a buddy, tag a friend, tag one of your girlfriends, somebody you think would love this. But I acknowledge that there is some Botec Archery women out there probably watching. We just want to thank you for watching and uh, know that... Uh, We've got, well, it's just the three of us uh, mugs up here right yeah. now. There's uh, three gals in our family. Yeah. My wife, Cindy, my daughter, Blair, and my daughter-in-law, Alicia. They're all new hunters, too. They're all training with their bows right now. They're going out hunting for wild turkey next week. So, uh, you know, it's really important for us. And I've got two daughters right now. Code's got two daughters. This is Grace's This bow is Grace's right bow. So uh, this is the Edge uh, yeah, the Diamond Edge SP1, and I mean, you may look at it and go, man, that looks like an adult bow, but the great thing about it is that it can be adjusted anywhere from 7 pounds to 70 pounds. So you can literally go from a guy your size, yep. and Grace is 10 years old. And something as simple as hunting whitetail at yep. 40 pounds here, or you can increase for 50, black bear to 60, 60, whatever you need. you need. The most important thing is the adjustment for us with Grace was that she was able to adjust it as her strength, and more importantly, as her form began to, yep. to come around, she was really able to do a great job. Five cups? Five you cups. sure? Okay, so uh, what is uh, baking soda? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's bicarbonated soda. So it's it basically what it is, it's a little bit of magic whenever you're baking. It's in, uh, now you could just use a self-rising flour or activated flour, but I want to use all purpose so you could just, so you have it. No matter what, if you've made pancakes at home, you've got these ingredients. So we're going to take, and you can always feel, it, you can feel the baking um, powder. It's, it feels, a, and it moves a little bit like, uh, like water in a dish. This is the baking powder. So you want to do uh, two big tablespoons of that. Now, I think Cole, about the same. So, Cole, do you have that completely finished? Yes. Man, that's a, I can't believe. So this is really, so this is off a 20 pound bird coming off. Okay, yep. cool. So that's two of those in there. Yep. And then teaspoons, we're gonna go with the other one. Right there, teaspoon, even teaspoon of this one. Just so, one. yep, and make sure that it's even. So if you have a look at this, so this is by volume two smoked turkey legs, wild turkey legs. Now that's off a 20 pound bird. That's a moderate, you know, modest sized bird. We've seen them coming in 20, 26 pounds. So that's, you know, that's a fair amount. So this is gonna go now into our uh, stock. And actually, yeah, just uh, here, watch that heat a little bit. And so Bay's crisping up that bacon. So let's put this in. My goodness, I had no idea there'd be so much. Oh man, it's all going in. Okay. So now what immediately begins to happen 
is that it's going to all it's going to mix those flavors together. Um, you know, the nice thing about having so much meat, which is which is a really pleasant surprise, is that uh, every single bite will have some of that beautiful turkey in it. And when you're putting it out like that, like kind of like it's a combination of a bit like a stew, a bit like a soup, and it's all this beautiful uh, dumpling that brings it together. So if you've never made dumplings before, you got that all in there? Yeah. So this is a really critical thing. I've got, it's important always, so this is a great rule for you in all baking, and that is to combine the dry ingredients yeah, first, before the, wet. before the wet, but to combine them separately, always. And it just means uh, you don't want a, a pocket of the baking powder or the baking soda in one side because you might have a biscuit that just gets I all lopsided. I was baking fresh bread once and I didn't do that, I was in a rush, and I literally ended up in no word of a lie, with a pot, I, I went to slice it in the middle of my bread and I had a pocket of air this big. Yeah. And <laughs> you can also, especially with baking soda, if you don't mix it, you could be eating and you taste great, taste great, and all of a sudden you'll bite into this one piece. It's almost like someone Bar put too much salt in it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what I'm going to do is you could do a couple things. You could sift this. Yeah. So you could use a tami, which is just basically a great big sieve. Or the easiest thing is just to grab a balloon whisk and just stir that up. And all you're doing is just breaking it up and combining it. Yep. It's an easy way to get it done. A little piece of As you notice, here. all of these things are definitely something that everyone has in their home. A stainless steel bowl, a balloon whisk, or just a regular whisk. Yep. Some flour, baking soda, and baking powder. It's so simple. Uh, I want to take a minute to, to also acknowledge that both of our series... Fearless Outdoors and The Outdoor Chef are both on, I'll let you pick up on that yeah, one. Yeah, both on MOTV. We're going live this spring. Our surefire recipes are going up. They're extremely detailed. We're teaching you recipes, you know, ingredient by ingredient. We're really going to drill down and give you what you want so that you can make your wild game taste amazing. Yeah. So one of the things I'm going to do, and actually if you would just take some of that up right up to the camera, and let's yep. get a really good bird's eye view of that. So, strip of so we showed you this last week, and we'll show you it again. We use fresh herbs whenever it makes sense, and this, so this is fresh thyme. You see the tiny the little leaves with the stems. Yeah. All you do to get these leaves off is you grab the tip, pull down, and all your leaves come off. Now you can use anything. So if and now I'm using fresh thyme because to me, uh, you know, thyme is perfect for turkey. Sage is also beautiful. You could use that. Rosemary is a little heavy, a little heavy, yeah. but you can use rosemary as well. But this is not a time where you're going to use a broadleaf herb like uh, basil yeah. or tarragon. You want something that will stand up, and the thyme, because it's broadleaf evergreen, is perfect for that. So you don't have to put uh, fresh uh, thyme or any herbs in your uh, dumplings. But for me, yeah. I love the color, I love the punch of flavor, and the time to add it is right now. Now. If you're going to put that dried stuff, what you can do when you have that, that pocket of dried stuff, you know that little tin can? Take that little tin can, go over to your trash can, open it up and drop it in. Because that's not what we want. Well, I want you to use something fresh. It's, it's extremely inexpensive. Yep. It's easy to come by. It stores beautifully. And it's, yep. the, the results are like nothing else. You know that. From yeah, all you fresh fresh when you get it home, any fresh herbs yeah. that you buy from the store, yeah. take uh, paper towels, wet it, and wrap yeah. your herbs inside it. It holds it perfectly. And like we said before, the point of adding the thyme here, you don't have to, but the way great recipes are made is just by adding little things at each step. And in the end, you're end, you end up with an amazing recipe. And everyone's like, how'd you do that? And it's just because you took just a little extra time to add, what is this taking us, 20 seconds to add that? A little bit of love, that's it. Yep. So I'm just putting a little bit of fresh ground uh, black pepper. All of these ingredients are in there. And if you didn't see our live at noon today, just a little heads up, in that turkey stock, we have carrots, we have celery, we have onions, and leek. All four of those are a beautiful flavor base. Yep. So, so just like last week, we taught you about the mirror plot, and that's exactly what we used again this week in a different recipe, and probably what you could use in another thousand recipes that you could do after this. And every single time you got another turkey. I'm going to hold that bowl and code. Let's grab the camera. I want, I want you to see at home the texture, what you should be expecting out of this. And uh, so this is, a, this is a very simple dough. And I'm just going to begin to bring it together. 
And uh, while I do, uh, you know, this this reminds me of a bunch of other types of uh, simple dough. Um, you know, things like yoki and pasta. They all have the same basic thing. There's there's uh, flour at their base, but with these, the dumplings, we want them to grow. We want them to cook. Tap that out, son. I'm just gonna get a spatula here. And we want them to be light. Uh, texture is a big part of that. Watch your bacon there, bud. And what Bay is going to do with that bacon is make to make sure to strain off as much of that fat as possible. And Coda, I'm going to get you to hang out here just for a minute because I really want to show the texture of this dough. You're going to think to yourself that it looks very liquid, but uh, as soon as I drop it in that uh, beautiful stock, it's going to firm up for me really nice and quickly. So one of the great things about uh, making dumplings is... Uh, a lot of people, you know, when it comes time for that to, to thicken up that stock, what happens is it's the flour that's in these because we're dropping them right into the uh, stock that'll thicken up and make that beautiful gravy. So with this fully combined, uh, Dakota, I think we're going to go right over to the pan. Now have a look at the texture of that. I'm getting this out because my grandmother wouldn't have me, if I wasted anything like this, I'd be in trouble. My mom too. Um, so, there we go. Beautiful. It, I, you know, one of the things I can tell you about, just so you know, um, it's, so I can smell the buttermilk. And you know, one of the great things about buttermilk too is the acidity. So that acidity is beautiful. Come, come on over here and we'll just take and we'll start spooning these in. So what you want, first of all, is just to make sure all of these ingredients are nicely combined. And then what we're going to do is just simply take big dollops of this. Uh, oh, thank you. So let's put, is this the full pound? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put about half of that in. I almost forgot. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. So if you're by chance just joining us, what you're seeing is a presentation. Uh, by the outdoor chef and uh, and Botech has been uh, a brilliant uh, partner of ours in go these beautiful dumplings and all you want to do is just find a home and this is the part where you show a whole bunch of love just literally tucking these in and just a reminder in a few minutes here we're going to be uh, giving out our giveaways we got two $50 Botech gift cards so uh, if you're looking for a new Botech t-shirt or a brand new hat that you want to keep for the next 25 years until it just about disintegrates, we're going to make sure to do that. All you got to do is you got to like this post, share it, and comment us a story. Tell us why you want these cards, what you might be doing with them, anything like that. And if you feel like it, tag a buddy so he can have a chance to do it as well. So you can see how, and I, you know, whenever I'm making dumplings, I make absolutely certain that I make enough of them because these are coveted. As a matter of fact, uh, I know my wife is going to eat these right off the top, so I've got to make sure there's lots. But you see, you just put, this, put them down. They're like, you know what they are like? Dakota and I were talking about it before we went on. They're exactly like little pillows. Yeah. So they're little pillows that soak up all that beautiful flavor. Now, if you look around them, you can see the color of the stock underneath. You can see that, uh, you know, when you develop a stock like that on your own, you know, for me, I'm extremely proud of it because I know that's going to be a ton of flavor. And we're literally, we're going to cover every single corner of this uh, And you can pie. see, uh, just as the same as last week, everything we're doing here is in this one pot. Yep. We did the same thing last week with the paid p potatoes. We had one cast iron pot, we scooped it, put it on top. But they're actually doing almost the same thing, just with the bread this time. But so, uh, the other thing, just sorry, quick. No, no, go ahead. The other thing I love about this, and we've done it quite a bit actually, is it's such simple ingredients. Like he said, there's five ingredients. So you're going up to bear camp, you're doing something like that. And instead of packing a protein bar, take a Ziploc bag, fill it with a pre-made the mix. Yeah. No, so it's take easy. It up, little bowl, whisk it up. Thing you and you not, have bread. Yeah, you just won't have you won't have buttermilk there, but you can definitely use water. You can also use powdered milk. Now have a look at this because this is an important step. And this is why it's so nice using good cast iron. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover this up and when I do I'm going to just leave that alone I'm going to leave it alone for about 25 minutes so let's uh, let's right now let's get liking and commenting and sharing right now because we're going to give away one of these $50 merchandise cards from Bowtech and then we're going to go into the shop and I'm going to talk a little bit about barbecuing and what we've done so like share comment and tag a buddy Last, I know uh, last week we had some uh, great stories from a couple guys. Jeremiah, I know he's watching. He had some great questions last week and some great stories. Dave and Brian, they were, uh, they were all those guys. They had some great stories, and uh, we really loved reading those and talking to you guys afterwards. It was quite enjoyable for us to have you guys and uh, sending you guys those binoculars and everything like that. Well, guys, you want to show them how we smoked those lights? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So <clears throat> we're going to take you out into our shop now, and uh, this is where we do a lot of our, uh, lot of our designing, a lot of our planning. Uh, it's where we always gear up, and I'm excited to show you a couple things. So let's first of all talk about barbecue. So what I chose to do, uh, I've, got a, uh, I've got a beautiful offset smoker. So the way I was able to do this in code, come on in real tight. We left everything in there from earlier today, so let's just lift up. We'll have a real good look at what we were able to accomplish. So you can see this is where I had my lump charcoal. This is where I put my smoking uh, wood in, the hickory. And then this is where I had, on the other side, this is where I had the turkey legs. Now, I had brine the turkey legs. Uh, the turkey legs sat for 24 hours in a mixture of water with uh, sugar and salt. And uh, that allowed me to get the, the heavy amount of blood away from the bones, to wick any of that flavor, that, that un, the, what I don't want in there, away from them, and also to get lots of moisture and some flavor in there. Then what I did, and this is, this is what I love about this barbecue in particular. Come on in here, Kurt. I was able to control the heat. And that's the most important thing. So this actually cranks up and down. Uh, this is a total chef's toy, but absolutely brilliant. So it's the second thing. So non-direct non -direct heat is critical. You want to make sure that you're getting heat, but that it's offset. And then when the smoke starts rolling, you want to keep it rolling for that whole time. Now, that's also, it's important if you have time before to soak your wood chips. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just like wood and it'll burn up really fast. But if you soak it, they always tend to smoke slow. twice as much yeah. and they burn twice as slow. And what I like to do is soaking them in a little bit of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so that a lot. this is an exciting thing, and please uh, share this with your friends. So this is something we're giving away for the 4th of July. So this is an asado cooker. So you've seen the, 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 the uh, what do they call it? You've seen Eggs. the bell. You've seen the egg. the egg. You've seen the kettle and the keg. This is the mother of all smokers, let me tell you. This thing is going to, this is porcelain stainless steel and the way that this is made we're going to tell you more about it but i just want you to know right now that we're giving one of these away for the fourth of july uh check this check our page at the outdoor chef and fearless outdoors and you'll be able to s check back in and see when we go live with that I so know, yeah i know uh we we just got a comment from uh jeremiah from last week and he said he wants the uh, Botech cards because he wants the new uh, jacket, but his wife won't let him order it. So uh, there's always a, a good reason to keep in uh, mind and watch these for your giveaways because some, uh, not me personally, but yeah. I know sometimes you guys hide stuff from Bass Pro and Cabela's as you walk in the front door. It's like if you've seen that <laughs> video where they, the little baby runs in and he goes, because <laughs> he's bought a new gun that day. Or the, the one where you put uh, $400 on the uh, credit card, but the rest is in cash. <laughs> Tell them about the uh, last hunt you two did for the uh, turkey. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the bow hunt? Yeah. Yeah. So the, we went on a bow hunt the other day. Bailey was hunting with the diamond deploy. and Oh, and when I, we didn't get them. Yeah. Oh, that, that, was bugger. that was incredible. I mean, <laughs> we, were, we were sitting at the edge of the field there. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of you can reminisce along with us. We're sitting at the edge of the field. Five o'clock comes around. We have till seven, and we hear a gobble off in the woods. And well, let's 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 start at the very beginning. That starts with Dad laying down on the log, yeah, half asleep. Well, that, <laughs> that was at like five fifteen. So so we get set up at the edge of this field, 
And then we call in these turkeys in, we hear him, we hear him, we hear him. He falls asleep. And we call this turkey in for probably an hour and a half. Yeah. Long time. Long then, time, uh, long time. And then he puts out a gobble right near the edge of the field, pokes his head out, looks, sees our decoys, and goes, eh, no thanks. I'll catch you in the morning, ladies. Tucks back tucks in. Tucks back and, in. I mean, that's, the, that's turkey hunting for you, though. I'm sitting there on my knees with my bow. I'm ready to draw. And then he comes out, peeks his head, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and then after that, he just dead silent. Yeah. Nothing. Not a gobble, not a, nothing. Just yeah. after that, everybody, they but went we, to bed. The point we is, just, we had a great time. And I mean, this whole hunting thing is very new to us. We're, we're chefs and, you know, there, very little unless we make a really bad recipe. There's not much dis disappointment in the kitchen unless you get a dish back. And then most of the times I just, you know, you know that scene where they send out a raw steak on the table <laughs> and just tell them to go jump in the lake, as we'd say in Canada. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Make sure it's frozen first, though. But yeah, so it. this hunting thing is very new to us, so it's a whole new way of, of dealing with disappointment, but it's really it's really fun at the same time. You'll get home, <laughs> and you'll be laying in bed at, like, 10 o'clock, and you'll be like, why didn't the turkey come out? Like, yeah. I just, and you just can't, you can't put your finger on it, and it's not one of those things where it's like, you mess up once, and you know it's like time after time after time after time, yeah. and then you finally understand. But uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna, gonna go, go back. We're in. gonna go back. Yeah. Dumplings. So, um, you know, one of the things that, as a professional chef, I can tell you um, that makes me so frustrated is poor equipment means that I don't get the job done right. And one of the things about Bowtech and Diamond and all of the Bowtech brands is that with the right tools, you can have success. And we've had repeated success. Um, our opportunities to uh, hunt with with uh, with the bow and what archery does is uh, puts me right in contact. Let's have a quick look at this. Uh, puts me right in touch with the animals and birds that we're hunting. Let's have a quick look. We'll get a little preview. Oh yeah. So you can see that's that activating. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. It's fragrant. Now when you look at that stock, that's unbelievable. That flavor, that came from smoking those legs. And let's just have a quick look at the texture. I just want to look, just so you can see right now. Look at that. See how they firmed up? i got to be honest with you. These are getting really, really close to being ready. So we've got, uh, we've got an exciting week next week planned as well. Um, now this recipe, and I have to apologize, I've had a very busy week. The recipe from last week, the cast iron wild turkey cottage pie. We're going to have both recipes up, pictures of both recipes, uh, and we'll have those up for you tomorrow. Uh, we've got a question. Megan? Uh, not a question, but Jordan says that he's loving the family involvement of the channel that comes on. Oh, good. Nathan says he needs some green tea and camo gear. Okay, good camo <laughs> gear. Well, you know what? We'll have some brilliant Sitka camo gear to give away in the coming weeks so keep watching yeah. uh please uh, as we uh, as we sign off here uh we've got two fifty dollar merchandise cards from Botech yep. to give away so like and share comment and uh and tag a buddy tag a friend um thank you for watching yeah, so we thank you for watching we appreciate you joining all along this journey with us and we want you to like and comment just because we want you to be involved in this we yep. want you to be part of making these recipes if you think that we're doing something wrong and you want to add something, throw it in the comments. Please, there. We let want us to know. know. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not conceited. We're not stuck up. No. Even if you want to, if you have a recipe, you're like, oh, I've never really wanted to try that because it has this, it has that. Yeah. If you want to know how, we're coming up with this stuff as we go. So yeah. if you have a recipe you want to try, we want to tailor to you guys. Yeah. So that brings up next week. Next week, we're going to be into venison. Yeah. Uh, now, we, we'll probably swing back around because we're going to get some more turkeys. And we'll probably do some more turkey yeah. recipes. But what we're going to do, we're actually going to use uh, the white-tailed deer that I harvested with my Botec rain. It's yeah. my first ever white-tailed deer. Yeah. And I can tell you, it was the most incredible experience of my life. You um, almost fell out of the tree. Yeah, I almost fell out of the tree. It's a good thing I had a, a tether. Uh, I could not control uh, the adrenaline. Yeah. It, was, it was amazing. The only thing that was that's really, frankly, more amazing to me than that is the taste of wild game. Oh. You want to talk about non-GMO? You want to talk about local? You want to talk about, about organic? Yeah. The wild game has it in spades. Yes, Megan. Um, so Dylan says he's saving up for the Botech Ring Seven, um, but he also says what kind of crossbows do you use? 
Oh, well, you know, we use Excalibur. Excalibur is a brand that we love, and I mean, their recurve technology is amazing. The thing I love about it, like when we're base going driving. to do base driving, this is the new micro suppressor. So this is a brand new bow. They suppressed it. We tested it side by side. It is quieter. And a tool like this, as we go up to bear camp, the great thing about it is its size. First yeah, of all, that's a big thing. as you know, is we got a pack out this. very wide as me, very yeah. tight. But the other great thing, I mean, look at it. It Gone. just fits right on your back, and away yeah. you go. That's easy. The best thing is that when we when we go bear camp. We're disappearing into the woods, right? We're six, seven hours out in the middle of nowhere. With a recurve crossbow, you can replace that string if anything happens to it. Yep. So that's a great question. Thank you very much, Dylan. And if you're saving up for the, the Rain 7, yep. believe me, you'll love it. It's uh, the let really off on that bow is on un unbelievable. Yep. And for me to think about that, for me taking my first whitetail with the Rain 7, yep. I mean, that's a huge, huge uh, get for me. And the biggest thing is that you think, you know, even for a beginner, it's so great because what it did for me when I shot it, is it's so consistent, so accurate that it builds confidence in you it immediately. Does. Yeah, it's and at the range in particular. Oh, the range, like you know, I as a starting archer, you would think that you would never shoot past, you know, maybe 30, 40 yards. Yeah, exactly. Out in the field, I maybe wouldn't attempt it, but I have personally, while shooting at targets, shot 65 yards and been in, you know, as Jim would say, the, the 10 ring. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what we need to do, uh, we need to serve some of this up. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you grab Absolutely. that camera and come, out, come back here. Uh, I want you to see how beautiful this is. Let's take this ladle. So have a look. Ready? Oh, yeah. That's that's money right there, folks. <coughs> I'm loving that. The smell when you, took, when you took that lid off, it just hits you like someone's hitting you in the face. That was delicious. So what I want to do now, do you see the texture of that gravy that's bubbling up from underneath? What I'm going to do is I'm going to press, and I just want to get a scoop of what's underneath. Make sure he gets what get what's gets get what's underneath. Excuse me. Yeah, pick up some of that turkey. Pick up some of that turkey. So you bottom. see that? And then I'm going to drop that into place. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so I think you need a little bit more of that gravy. I, I need more gravy. So gravy is going on top. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'm just gonna get a bit more, and we'll just finish that just like that. Beautiful. So you got this beautiful little dumpling tucked right in there. Uh, so this is wild turkey and dumplings. An uptake on chicken and dumplings and a brilliant way for you to use wild game to get other people, I know you love it, but to get everybody in your home, in your community, at the office, you bring them, you bring them this, don't tell them what it is, they'll be hooked. Right. And they'll be able to share yep. the things that we share when we go out and when we harvest our own meat. Yep. Yep. Thank you for watching everybody and be sure to tune in next week because uh, we'll have lots more exciting recipes, giveaways, and uh, who knows what will happen. We're live. We're live. Who knows what will happen. Good night. Night. Okay, I wanna, I wanna you want to try, try that? Okay, yeah. grab a spoon. Spoon or fork? Fork. You should grab one for yourself, why don't you? You have one? <laughs> it's hot. Like, really hot. I know. Bacon is nice though. So. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs>